Now, I want to get to the latest on this Texas case. So, as you know, there's been this case, we've all been following it, in which there's a seven-year-old named James Younger, and there's a ruling that came down from a court that originally was going to grant sole custody to this kid's mother, Dr. Ann Georgulis. Georgulis, according to the father, has been since the age of three indoctrinating this kid to believe that he's a girl, has been telling him that he is a girl. In fact, there is tape of this kid being asked when he's three years old why he thinks he is a girl. It's disturbing. Here's what it sounds like. You're a boy, right? No. I'm a girl. Who told you you're a girl? Mommy. <clears throat> when did she tell you you were a girl? Because I love girls. Oh, I see. So mommy told you you were a girl? Uh-huh. So mommy puts you in a dress and puts nail polish on you? Uh-huh. And, and what does mommy tell you? She tells me I'm a girl. Oh, okay. Do you think you're a girl? Uh-huh. You do? Is that why you wear this, so that you can have long hair? Mm-hmm. Okay, so mommy tells me I'm a girl. Okay, that's pretty disturbing stuff. Mommy should not be telling a boy that he is a girl. That is child abuse. It is. I'm sorry. It is the telling a three-year-old boy that he is a girl, not even humoring him, telling him that, yes, indeed, you are correct. You are a girl. That's child abuse. It's your job as a parent to parent your child, not to humor his, his fantasies about life. Okay, well, here is the latest development in this case. According to the Daily Wire, Amanda Prestigiacomo reporting, on Thursday, Judge Kim Cook's ruled Texas father Jeffrey Younger has a say in his seven-year-old son's gender transition, which is being facilitated by the boy's mother and Younger's ex-wife, Dr. Ann Georgulis. Younger's attempting to halt the boy's transition. Cooks of the 255th District ruled that the parents will have joint conservatorship over James, which includes making joint medical decisions for the child. However, Cooks also placed a gag order on Younger so that he can't speak to the press about the case and decided the father is not required to pay attorney's fees, which means that Younger Save James website, which has circulated videos of James testimonials and vital court documents, will have to be shut down pursuant to the order. So now that means that if mommy continues to manipulate the case and then the judge rules for sole conservatorship, he won't have been able to say anything or he'll be in danger of violating a gag order. So it sounds more like the judge is just saying, listen, we don't like all this public scrutiny. We don't like that Greg Abbott stepped in, right? The Texas governor said he would investigate and send child family services to investigate. He doesn't like that Ted Cruz mouthed off about it and Dan Crenshaw. He doesn't like that people like me mouth off about it, right? So the judge is just saying, well, well, you know what? Let's just keep going with what we've got going here and you don't say anything. You shut up. There's no gag order on Georgulis, by the way, right? As far as we know, there's no gag order on Georgulis. So she can continue to put up pictures on her website of her son in a dress and talk about her modern parenting methods, which is apparently something that she does. And she's a doctor, and her medical practice website, until recently, according to Matt Walsh, had a picture of her and her son up there, him wearing a dress, which is incredibly, incredibly invasive for a seven-year-old child. And what you're seeing is that the, the media are being denied access. Before the judge handed down her verdict, she kicked out all media sources, including the Texan Daily Mail and LifeSite News, as well as ABC, CBS 11. And, and, well, ABC, CBS 11, and NBC were reportedly allowed access. But all family and friends were kicked out, and anybody who covered this thing skeptically. That's according to LifeSite News. Reporting from the Texan says that Georgulis' lawyers, Jessica Janicek and Laura Hayes, claim during the trial the mother does not plan on giving James hormone blockers at this time, but no one has stated that Georgulis would not be open to using them when James begins puberty, which is when he is like 11 and a half. So, you know, people who are reporting that she's about to start using hormones is not true, but she says nothing would stop her, presumably. She would... She would she could start using hormones on him at 11 and a half and, and the father couldn't do anything about that. Plus, she obviously gets to continue to indoctrinate her child in the belief that he is, in fact, a little girl when by all biological metrics, he is not a little girl. He is a little boy. And confusing children about this stuff is nasty. It does not protect their innocence. It does not help them. The vast majority of children who say that they are members of the opposite sex end up, end up abandoning that belief as they get older. Okay, the, the whole thing, uh, Georgulis' t- July 2018 testimony apparently reveals that if James persists, is set to be evaluated for hormone suppressants as young as age eight. And this is just incredibly disturbing stuff. Now, it was funny. A couple of weeks ago, you may remember that people got very uptight with me when I said that I do not like the idea of the state being able to tell me how to parent my child. Right? I don't want that the state should be able to shut down my religious school on the basis of my religious school being offensive to their ears. And I wouldn't like it if the the state decided that they were going to shut down my ability to homeschool my child and that if I moved states and this became federal policy, 
that there would be no place for me to go. And if it came to the police showing up at my door, calling me a truant parent and threatening to remove my child from my home because I can't parent my child the way that I see fit, then I would meet those people at the door with a gun if I had no other choice, right? If I had no choice, it was not, voting is no longer an issue, right? I mean, somebody shows up at your door to take your child away, voting is not really the issue, right? You remember I got myself in all sorts of angry waters in Twitter. Ooh, Twitter got so mad about all this. By the way, that's called the Constitution of the United States when fundamental rights are absolutely breached and are unchanging, and now you're faced with a violation of those fundamental constitutional rights. The Declaration of Independence and, and Constitution are pretty clear on this. Thank you for tuning in to The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative media outlets in the country. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.